Sin City was in transition. The Rat Pack no longer ruled the Strip, and the economic boom of the 80s had yet to begin. Everything was cash, cash or cops. Nobody that I knew of paid by check. Nobody that I knew of used credit cards. Everybody paid by cash. Everybody had cash. The perfect place for someone whose only understanding of nine to five is how it might bookend an inside straight. Stu Unger rolled into town in 1974 and was immediately at home. He looked like a baby. He had a baby face. He was very hyper. He, you know, if he's sitting at a table, he was bouncing his leg, moving with his hands, or talking and getting up and walking around. Wondered if he was old enough to be in the casino, and I thought to myself, this just must be some rich kid. I didn't know that I was looking at the best in room players that ever lived. When I first moved here, he told me he had put away a million dollars in a vault. And I'm like playing blackjack and i'm like wow eventually unger was joined by his girlfriend madeline and her young son richie he was naive to a, a lot of the worldly things so you know i went to go buy the home i went to go buy the cars i have to do everything everything madeline decorated their lives with was paid for in cash he thought you write a check and and the check is good you know, he didn't realize you have to go in the bank, put the money in the bank, you know, for it to be good. Stuart Unger, gin player. What do you think about Stuart? I think Stuart has what we call card sense. So he shows up in 1980 and plays in this uh, World Series of Poker. This was only the second poker tournament he had ever played in before. He had played five gin rummy tournaments up to that point and had won three out of the five. He got two threes. Johnny had when he entered, it was kind of a lark that it wasn't really serious. Out of a, a field of about 100 people, it made him 100 to 1. And I recall very, very vividly that an Irish bookmaker changed his line after watching Stewie and just watching him at the different tables. It made him 20 to 1, just based on watching the guy's demeanor. You know, how confident he sounded. Six, and Stu Unger was already a high roller. The confidence, the attitude, the ability, the qualities that became legend were born on the streets of New York's Lower East Side. His father's name was Isidore Unger. Isidore owned a bar on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. His father was a bookmaker, and uh, Stewie's education, to a large extent, took place in the bar. Bars were hangouts for legal and illicit things, too. Bars are where the wise guys hung out, and there was a local bookmaker and numbers runner, and it was just a place to hang out. Often after school, Stewie would come to the bar, hang out in the bar, and be associated with a lot of the wise guys, or people that were connected to organized crime. These essentially were Stu Unger's mentors. Stewie, by the time he was seven or eight, was actually doing some of the books uh, for, for his dad, which is a really remarkable thing. Stewie ends up being, in a sense, the kid bookmaker of the joint. the ones at school, noticed Unger's uncanny ability with numbers as well. Some suggested he was a genius. 
He skipped seventh grade because of his intellect. And then quit school in tenth grade, in spite of it. an older man so he did not really have a close relationship with his father he had more of a relationship with his mom after Isidore Unger died Stu Unger's parents became a bunch of wise guys and all he knew was going around and playing in card clubs and being protected by a lot of the people in organized crime First time I met Stewie, I saw this young kid walk in with an entourage, and it seemed like he was controlling the conversation. I've never seen a kid that young beat it around the gambling. Those days he was had a sweet innocence to him that uh, disappeared along the way, let's say. They've been playing four days. This is the final. When Stu Unger placed his first bet at the 1980 World Series of Poker, he was 26 years old, young by poker standards. But he was already an old soul at games of chance. He'd been gambling virtually every day for at least 16 years. I played with him each day, and I never saw anybody that improved from day to day like he did in that tournament. And it came down just to he and I, we were the last... Players. What about the chips in your hand? Stewie wants it all. Stewie called. He fooled me on a hand, won all my chips, and he was the champion, and I was the second place finisher. Stewie wins the tournament with a five-high He was very happy, obviously. It was Unger's first World Series of Poker Championship. He won $365,000. That was the beginning of the Stu Unger legend in the tournaments. But even as that legend was being written, there was a dark chapter waiting to be told. I was at Del Mar Racetrack with a couple of the poker players, including Stewie. And he is starting to bet with a guy known as the Flipper. And he has a hustle. He flips coins. And he bets you on the outcome. Stewie was going to get involved in this. He was willing to just think he was lucky enough to find a total stranger at the racetrack that flipped coins and wanted to throw his money away. That's what's how Stewie was. Heads you win, tails you lose. Some people are born to live on the edge of that 50-50 blade. It was 1980. Stu Unger had just won the World Series of Poker. He had a huge bankroll. His girlfriend Madeline and her son Richie had joined him. Two years later, they were husband and wife. Richie was the main ingredient that kept us uh, together, and he adored him. They played baseball. They played basketball. And uh, my son was so appreciative to anything he did and he would introduce everybody this is my dad this is my dad but there was another side to this success story cocaine he turned to cocaine in order to fuel his uh, ability to stay awake to stay focused you know, there were a lot of guys out here doing cocaine at that time, you know. That's especially a lot of the top poker players because it kept you up for an extra couple of days. They played several day sessions, marathon sessions in those days. You know, Stewie was just right in there with them. They were staying up 24 hours. He had no clue when somebody said to him, oh, this will keep you up. You know, I first...